it's just so gross. It's like dead skin. It's like peeling it off. It's kind of gross, but you have to do it. <laughs> well, we're gonna fix this on today's episode. We are doing a curb appeal makeover of my front porch and a little bit beyond. So let's get started. <laughs> Welcome to Design to the Nines. I'm Natalie Callahan, and if this is the first time we're meeting, welcome to my channel. Today, we are taking care of this front door as well as giving the front of my house a little bit of a makeover. A little more than a year ago, we had the entire exterior of our home professionally painted, but this is definitely a project you can DIY yourself depending on your budget. Almost all of it looks fantastic. The one area that it doesn't is this front door. From the research that I've done, it looks like there might have been like some moisture issues, so I didn't know if it was just too humid the day that it was painted, but it's gotten really bad. But the rest of our house looks amazing. The paint's holding up fantastic. Fantastic. I wasn't really sure what to do with this door because I didn't know if like stripping it would even work, if there's something wrong with the door, if it, we just repaint it and then it would look like this in a month or two. So what I've decided to do is we are getting a brand new door. I decided to treat myself this time. I called in a professional. I pretty much DIY everything on this channel. I've even built my own fireplace, but it's an affordable price that I'm okay with. We don't have to DIY absolutely everything all the time. Before he gets here, we need to go in and paint it. I want to paint it indoors so that we don't have a repeat of that. I just wanted to play it safe. I'm going to paint it indoors. So I've got this on my dining table. I know, crazy, right? <laughs> but I laid down a blanket first and then I covered it up with a painter's drop cloth. I've got everything taped off, including the glass that will be in our brand new door. Isn't this going to be pretty though? And I've decided to paint it in this Modern Masters front door paint. I read the reviews. It seems really good. I've done a full tutorial on how to paint a door. Basically, we're gonna start with the inside and then we're gonna roll it. Honestly, I thought about spraying it, but again, I'm running into the humidity factor and I don't have a basement. So I tried the Modern Masters paint and it was just absolutely terrible. This is what it looked like after two coats. Streaky, blotchy, and just absolutely horrific. And it was giving me nightmares of a repeat of our current door situation. I honestly don't know what all the fuss is about because this just might be the worst paint I've ever used. So then I took a trip and got some Sherwin-Williams paint at Lowe's, one coat of this, and we were absolutely back in business. And the door is ready to be installed. Well, he's installing the front door we're gonna head up to my studio. We're gonna work on some DIYs with the help of Cricut to make this front porch really special and really inviting. For our first project, we are going to be making a stenciled doormat that just simply says hi. <laughs> it's very friendly, right? <laughs> I wanted to do something that was really simple so you can see just how easy it is to do. So I go into Cricut Design Studio and add a square and then I change that square's dimensions to the dimensions of our doormat. This is just so you can kind of have an idea of what it's gonna look like on the mat. Then I type in the word hi or whatever word you want. I used the font Bramello, which is a font that I downloaded from defont.com. And after you download it, you can just find this under the system section under font. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I do have like a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use Cricut Design Space. So if you need something a little bit more detailed, make sure you check that out. Then you're just gonna wanna size it how you like, and then we're not going to need the rectangle anymore. So we're gonna just make that disappear. And then we're gonna cut it out on a 12 by 24 inch mat in permanent vinyl. Then you're going to weed it just like you would a stencil. Now this next part's a bit tricky, so just be patient with the process. Now, normally when you transfer vinyl, you're gonna put on transfer tape and then you peel it back. It was just not having it this time around, so this texture's a little bit challenging to work with, so I just decided to pull off the transfer tape and then just place it on like a sticker. For this next part, I did this in my craft room, but I would recommend you doing this wherever you plan on spray painting it because some Sometimes when you transfer it, it can get a little bit messed up. I took my discarded transfer tape that I didn't end up 
using and I put that next to the stencil to kind of cover up some of the doormat and then I take out my blow dryer and you could also use a heat gun and this kind of helps shrink wrap it onto the doormat kind of creating a tighter seal so feel free to your, use your hand to kind of press it down into place while it's warm then we take some blue painters tape and tape off the edges or anything that you don't want spray paint to get on and then we take it outside or hopefully you've already had it outside and then spray it in truck bed liner spray paint i couldn't find the stuff that i normally use but my husband had this in the garage and so i gave it a whirl and it seems to have a good outcome then once it's dry peel everything back and it's simple as that now stick with me to the very end if you want to see the final stylized look because that is coming Next, we are going to be making a welcome sign for just left of the door. And I knew I wanted my sign to be pretty substantial, so it is going to be 24 inches tall by 36 inches wide. So I can make a rectangle in that size and we can kind of see what we're doing. Then I write welcome and then to the, and I just stayed with the original Cricut font, and then I made the to the smaller. <laughs> That sounds kind of confusing. <laughs> and then for the Callahans, we are using Rostilla. And I separate all of the letters that I could so that I could make the C larger and kind of space it how I'd like. And then when we are happy with the overall look of the sign, we are just going to make that rectangle disappear because we don't need it. And we are gonna cut this out on my Cricut Maker in wood. Now it needs to be a wood that is designed to be cut on a Cricut machine. I will link what I used in the description box beneath this video. And depending on the length of your name, you may need to separate it into different sections to fit on the wood pieces, which are not the standard mat sizes. Now this will probably take about 12 to 24 passes on your machine. You can kind of just check it as you go, hit the pause button, see how it looks, and then keep cutting it if needed. Then once we have everything cut out, take it outside and spray paint it in a glossy black spray paint. And now it's time to build something to put it on. And we are gonna be using up some of the scraps for my scrap pile. So this is gonna go bye-bye real soon here. But do you see all this wood? This is like gold right now because wood is so expensive. <laughs> but I've got plans for it coming soon. Today I'm going to be using up some of this faux brick paneling that I had left over from my recent bathroom renovation. If you haven't seen that video, it's awesome. I'll link it down below. I thought we could turn this into a cool sign. Now this is kind of made out of like an MDF type product and that's okay because it's going to be in the covered porch area. Plus I'm going to frame it out in some real wood and I think it will be okay. <laughs> we'll see how it holds up over time. We are going to cut this down to 24 by 36 inches. Since our brick is kind of thin and I want to put a frame around it, we need to kind of lift it up and give it something to support a frame. So I'm just gonna use this one by three for my scrap pile. I'm gonna do butt joints because it's gonna be hidden and then we're gonna miter the frame. For the frame, I'm gonna be just using this lightweight, inexpensive one by two and we're gonna miter this. Before we install the frame, I just take some white spray-on primer and do two coats with that. My original intent was just to use it as a primer, but it ended up looking so good that I just left it. Then I used some antiquing wax by Folk Art on the frame and let that dry. Then we lay out our lettering as we did in Design Studio. And when we're happy with the layout, we go ahead and use Gorilla Clear Gel Glue, or you could use E6000 as well. I wouldn't recommend using hot glue in a hot, humid environment, as it probably won't withstand the elements. After that dries, we're going to add some wood glue to our frame and nail it into place. Finally, we add a D-ring hook to hang it on. And for our last DIY for our front porch is a wood round monogram for the middle of a wreath. I start by searching in Design Studio for C monograms in the Cricut Access area. I select this one. Then I take two circles and slice out a ring about a half inch thick around. And you'll see why this is important in just a second. Thank you. 
Then I place our monogram over the top of it and then weld it together. This kind of acted as a little bit of a buffer for a frame. I made this seven and three quarter inch wide overall and then we are just gonna cut this out in the same wood we used for our lettering in the last project. Then I take an eight inch embroidery hoop, the part that doesn't have the clip on it, and I attach that to our monogram using wood glue and this kind of acts as a frame and kind of finishes off the edges nicely. Then I add some clips all the way around to kind of hold it in place as it dries. After it's dried, we're gonna take some gel stain in the color Kona and give it a good coat and then let that thoroughly dry. Now how we are gonna attach this to the wreath is I just took a couple of paper clips. This is what I used, you can use whatever you want. And I glued them with hot glue on the top and the bottom of this monogram. And then I took some twine and tied it to our wreath. Now I would advise against using the hot glue because as I mentioned before, it did not withstand that long and it popped off pretty quickly. And so I had to go back in and use something a little bit stronger. So use something a little bit stronger and let it thoroughly dry before tying it to your wreath. My new front door is in. I love it. It is so beautiful. I need to still paint around the casing because this is a different color. And you know, from installation, there's like some fingerprints. We'll clean that up. Now to address this window. I love the light that it's bringing into the inside and also the detail that it brings to the outside. I love this door. But even though we're putting up a wreath, we like our privacy. So up top, I had frosted that and I used like a spray on frosting but I'm not convinced that I want permanent frosting on this window but I've got a really fun hack that uses contact paper to kind of disguise and filter the light but without the permanent feature to it and best part is it's gonna cost us one dollar because I picked up the contact paper from the Dollar Tree so very affordable I like that so to do this just cut out your one dollar contact paper just a little bit larger than the window pane lightly mist with a water bottle and then stick your contact paper to the window and smooth it out using some kind of flat scraping tool. Then you're gonna take a razor blade and cut off the excess as close to the edge as possible. Now my water bottle went a little overboard and was pretty blotchy with the way the water sprayed out. And a few days later, the water bubbles are still dissipating, but should be gone really soon. So don't be alarmed if this happens to you as well. This might take a few days to fully look right, but it does give a nice, beautiful frosted look without the long-term commitment and the heavy price tag. So we had a little accident on our driveway. How many of you have had this happen? We just kind of thought that we're left with this and that we might need to rip out some of these pavers and replace them. Well, before we do that, I want to try degreasing it and try to see what we can do. So I got this off of Amazon. It's a degreaser, it had really good reviews. So we're gonna see if this works. I also got this little brush. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this on our grease spots, scrub it really good, let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna break out our power washer and power wash our driveway. For two treatments, I would say this process gave me about a 60 to 70% improvement over what it was before. So I am really happy with these results, but I think that if I give it a couple more treatments, I can get it all the way removed because this has been sitting on our driveway for months now and it might take a little extra effort to get it all the way out. So one day my husband surprised me and ripped out some garbagey looking bushes that I've been complaining about for months and it revealed some sandbags that we had gotten for a hurricane that almost was but never happened. So I am going to relocate those out of my front garden bed. This is gonna be a good workout. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna get some jasmine because it smells good and I think it's pretty easy to grow. I'm kind of going for an all white flower theme and now I'm gonna go try to find some gardenias because I, I'm filling gardenias and jasmine. It's gonna smell amazing and have that white and green look that I'm looking for. All right, I found our gardenias. They're beautiful. Some black mulch and a few more flowers and we are all set to go. Now it's time to unload our goodies and lay them out in our garden bed. It has been 91 degrees today, but we've got a little bit of a cloud cover right now and a little bit of a breeze. So I am so grateful for that because we are about to plan up these. I kind of have it laid out how I want. I'm not a master gardener, but I do have a little bit more success having it in the ground versus the pot where I consistently kill things. I've got gardenias, jasmine, and I did end up getting some lavender because I thought we needed a little something else and I thought it was like a nice soft pretty color that I'm gonna get. just dig holes and then I've got some black mulch we're gonna mulch all the beds When we bought this house, there are no light fixtures here. Well, it's wired for it. I see the, the electrical spots for it on either side. We are gonna add some new lighting on either side of my garage door. I am gonna do this myself and I ordered these light fixtures off of Amazon. Really excited about that. They're really cute. You may wanna call in a professional to do this. This is something that I'm comfortable doing on my own. And one of the cool things about these light fixtures are that they have a sensor that automatically turn them on at night and turn them off at dawn. Now, after all of our hard work to make our house look really beautiful, it would be a shame to leave something as unattractive as this yellow doorbell. Now, we decided to upgrade to a Google Nest doorbell device, but you don't have to spend that much on a doorbell to make it look much more finished. There are some beautiful black ones that you could get for around $12. As for this one, it's an easy install and the app walks you right through the process, basically holding your hand all the way. I can't vouch at this point for how much we will like the Nest doorbell, but so far, so good. Plus, it just looks pretty darn good, don't you think? <laughs> Now it's time for all of the finishing touches. I'm so excited. This is going to be great. Do you have a pot that looks a little like this? Black, but it's kind of dull. It's plastic. Well, I've got a hack for you. This is another use for WD-40. This won't be a permanent fix, but it should last you a good while. What we're going to do is just spray this on and rub it all over and it will give us a nice like new shine. How awesome is this? Seriously, gotta love WD-40. <laughs> After letting the WD-40 dry, we drill a couple of drainage holes into our pot. I believe this is why the previous plants did not do well because of poor drainage. A little potting soil, some carefully selected perennials that should do well in full sun, and an old DIY, which I will link in the playlist, complete this look. Next, I add some solar-powered LED spotlights for accent in the garden. I also ordered some garden lights for by the pathway, but they showed up the wrong color, <laughs> so I'll have to add those later and of course we add all of our fun DIYs so one last touch for all of my longtime viewers you might recognize this I thought it would look cute at the end of my pathway here and now it's time to show you the final result and voila the finished look I can't believe we finally made it all the effort was well worth it in the end
door. Isn't it so beautiful? I love it. I want to thank this episode's sponsor, Cricut. If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button right there. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family. And to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.